Hello, I'm Tom. And I'm Lucy. And this is our LT35 camper van conversion. It was a minibus that we bought and have done the conversion ourselves. Um, so welcome to the tour. So this is our kitchen, it's a nice L-shaped kitchen. It's nice and big because we like to cook and we don't want to be on top of each other. In here, we have all our pots and pans, spice rack, cups, plates and the teas, coffees. We put in these extendable dowels um, to stop the plates from sliding out on the cups. And we've also got this rubber matting which keeps the cups in place. Over here we've got the teapot. It's got a very special home. We wedged it in with um, a stick and nailed it to this shelf. Uh, it works really well, it doesn't move when on the move. Um, here we've just got a basket of stuff and then this is where we keep most of our food storage. It wasn't planned but it, it works <laughs> well for us anyway. So in here we've got our water storage, we've got grey water, fresh water and our bin and recycling shoves in there too. Uh, here we've got some pocket storage which houses uh, a fold away sink, brushes, bags, all that old stuff. So this is our sink, it's a Dometic Spev with one burner hob. So the guy who used to own the van, he um, semi-converted it into a camper. It was really basic but he threw this in with us. So, okay, so the top drawer we've got all our cutlery, utensils and all of that kitchen clobber. Um, we're very well stocked in that department. In the middle drawer we've got our junk. And um, bottom drawer is our bathroom, so all, all toiletries and things like that. We actually used most of our furniture from our old flat and repurposed it into the van, which actually saved a lot of time and it works. The kitchen worktop is from IKEA in the bargain section. Um, shout out to Kathy who told us about this beauty, so we went there straight away. I decided to get a Dometic fridge, I think it's 50 litres, I'm not quite sure, um, but we've put it here so we had a bit more space in the kitchen area there. The good thing is about this, you can set it to open up whichever way you want, but we've just, the way we've put it in means we can't swap that door around. It's also got a freezer compartment that comes out as well, which is really useful for if you're having ice cubes for those gin and tonics on long summer evenings, which we haven't actually done yet. Um, <laughs> here we've also got our slide out table. Again running with the theme of the rest of the van from recycling things this is made up of a bit of shelf from our old flat and the runners that it's on are just parts of our bed that we cut up so it just slides in and out of those the handles are the same handles that are in the kitchen and Lucy found those in her parents garage and actually painted them gold so that they would look a little bit better than the rusty disgusting colour that they were before we made our chairs, again, a similar theme as the rest of the van. These were made from chopped up bits of IKEA shelving that we had in the flat, and then a bit of ply, uh, ply on the front as well. Um, and then the lid is made from two bits of foam that we got from Dunnell Mill, I think, uh, and then stitched them over. And the fabric is the same fabric that we used for the curtains, which we got from a factory shop that was destined for John Lewis. Everyone in Cumbria gets their fabrics on there. We usually keep our clothes in here, so if you lift this up, uh, you can throw your clothes in there, usually in packing cubes, but we're being a bit lazy at the minute. Um, if you notice, we've got these little rectangular bits of wood, and the reason we put them in is because we built a, uh, a third bed, basically, using a bit of plywood that goes across there. Unfortunately, that snapped in half when we helped a stranger get out of the mud while we were driving around the highlands. So we have no third bed at the moment. We went for a fixed bed, mainly because we're very lazy and I've been away in a camper van before where it didn't have a fixed bed and making the bed and putting the bed away was just a massive pain in the backside so we thought if we have a fixed bed we'd avoid all that but also, which we're going to show you soon, it gives you lots of space underneath for storage so we've just created way more storage for ourselves by having a big cavernous space in the back that we can access from the back doors. The bed again was our IKEA bed that we just chopped the ends off 
and we've just bolted it into the walls so it's just that and then we've got a custom made mattress that we got online i think from the website is literally called custom mattress direct or something it's on our instagram because it's a minibus we have lots of windows as you can see so tom's lovely mum judith she made us some curtains which roll down tie up which is perfect for what we need and they're just attached by velcro we decided to clad the ceiling because we really liked the cosy cabin feel and um, it was actually surprisingly so easy to do and we've also got some speakers um, which actually only come through the when we're driving so we never get to experience it but we thought it looked quite nice anyway on the top of the van we've got a 275 watt solar panel um, but I ordered it and didn't measure the ceiling space so under here we've got a lovely skylight but we can't actually see out of it because the solar panel covers it <laughs> but we can still um open it up and get some fresh air through so from the solar panel up there it all comes into this box here so the box lid just comes off and we've got the solar charge controller split charge relay which charges the battery when we're running and we've got 110 amp hour battery which is fine for what we need now but we might upgrade to a, an, and add another battery in there and an inverter and all the fusey bits and electrical bits and bobs but there's loads on youtube you can have a look at that one of our favorite bits in the van is these old seat belt signs which we've left in from when it was a minibus as we thought it'd be nice to have a little bit of history. We decided not to put any overhead storage in because we liked the open feel of the van and we didn't want to feel hemmed in. We don't need that extra storage, seriously. <laughs> so up here we've got some baskets um, and plenty of storage so we shove like scarves, bags, first aid kits, all that clobber. Games, which is, yeah, games in the van too. And then we've got uh, a little roll down curtain again, which um, hides the cab area and keeps it relatively warm and cool in winter and summer. This is our garage, which is the best space in the whole van. The reason we've built the bed up here is so we could have all this space. So we've got our spare tire, which we're gonna build a bracket for underneath and put under because it takes up a lot of space some shelving here for little bits and bobs, some of our shoes, slippers, hiking boots. We've got the pizza oven, which comes out occasionally when we've got a bit of time. Make a pizza in about two minutes, not including all the time it makes to make the dough. Um, and then we've got our inflatable kayak in the back, which is great because we haven't got space for, on, for a foot prop one on the roof, so we've got an inflatable one. We've got our buoyancy aids because it's inflatable, you never know if you're gonna, if it's gonna get a puncture and you don't wanna, you know, get caught. Um, got an axe here, which was given to us by my friend Joe. Very kind. It's got my initials on there and a bow on because he gave me it for my birthday, which was last week. This is for when we're going to take a shower, so it just pops out, goes on the floor. We've got two ways of showering. Well, three. Going for a lakeside dip. <laughs> uh, we've got a pump which we fill up with hot water, then pump it, and we get a nice pressurized shower. We've also got a uh, solar sh shower that you just hang from a tree. We've got a little table here so if we want to sit and have a cup of tea and then these are the curtains here which again these just roll up we've got like an energy saving material on the back which is great which keeps the, the heat in and the cold out so that's the boot so we chose van life because we love the freedom of traveling anywhere and having the comfort of our own home right here with us it was something that i think i'd always definitely wanted to do from a really young age um, well, actually, I wanted to get a motorbike and ride around on a motorbike, but I haven't learned to ride a motorbike, so <laughs> a van was the next best thing. <laughs> At the minute, we're just using it for kind of weekend trips away. The plan was pre-COVID to go away for a year around Europe, but obviously that hasn't, sadly, hasn't been able to happen. But next year, we'll be doing that and living in it full time. Um, if we had any tips or advice, I think for people thinking about doing van life is... It takes about eight times longer to do everything than you think it's going <laughs> yeah, to. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? You think something will take you about ten minutes, but actually it takes you about ten days. <laughs> yeah. We converted ours, we didn't do it in like a chunk, we did it in bits and bobs because we were both working. 
and um, we were doing it on the driveway because we lived in a flat. <laughs> we would take all our tools out from the flat into the van and work in the van for the day in the cold because it was the winter um, and just do it like that and then at the end of the day take a trudge with, with all our tools back from the car park back into the van. <laughs> yeah, it was cold. And our first night away in it actually was Edinburgh in the middle of February for my old brother's 30th birthday. That's before we put a bed in it. Yeah. Um, and we had like... No heating. No proper curtains. We just had insulated bits of uh, insulation foil. foil that we blue tacked to the windows <laughs> as curtains. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one thing we change about our van, it is we've got one fixed hob as part of the sink, but we mostly use a camping stove that we get out from the back every time that we want to cook which is fine and it gives us flexibility to cook outside but when it's raining which it is a lot because we live in England having to go out to the back to get your cooking equipment is a pain in the bum yeah it is a pain and we, we went to Scotland a few weeks ago and the midges cooking yeah it was a challenge to say the least <laughs> every time you open the door you get attacked by a thousand midges yeah death by a thousand midges <laughs> So we're looking to put in a fixed two burner hob on the worktop and I think and an LPG system. So that's what we're going to upgrade in the next coming months. I hope you enjoyed that content. Um, if you hadn't noticed, we do have an ebook that we sell, uh, and the link is just in the description. Uh, it contains 160 pages crammed full of practical advice, walkthrough information, electronic schematics, and part lists, which will make your job a lot easier for doing a van conversion and it will save you time and money. Also, we've created special videos for the ebook which enable you to see walkthroughs for how to do loads of things in a van conversion. So that's for water systems, for your electrics, for how to do simple woodwork joints that anyone can do. And I really believe that anyone, regardless of their experience, can make a half decent van conversion. Thanks for watching, we really appreciate you watching our content and we put a lot of effort to make it interesting, informative and find those cool projects that feature on our channel. Consider subscribing, leave a comment and we'll see you next week.